June's Diary hits the girl group of the decade. The decade. Hello, everybody. It's been a long time, hasn't it? There have been a lot of things that have been going on, but I am back for now. <laughs> I just wanted to really jump on here because something very monumental has happened. It's something that I've been waiting for. For those of you that have been following June's Diary, you would have seen that I would have put up a few videos back in the day. I actually was watching their performance at the Essence Festival, and I wanted to just take some time uh, to tell you why June's Diary is the girl group of the decade. The decade. I'm going to give you 10 reasons, not five. I usually give you five, but I'm actually super excited. I actually think I'm standing just a little bit, but I said to myself, you know what? If you're going to stand, let yourself stand. Be a June bug if you're gonna be a June bug. So I'm gonna tell you guys 10 reasons why I think June's Diary is the girl group of the decade. Number one, the one thing that we were all waiting for in seeing June's Diary and their come up on social media is just, we were waiting for them to do choreography. And we saw them in heels, doing their dance moves, singing all of their notes, and they weren't dying. <laughs> they weren't on the ground panting. They were actually keeping up. And I think that's a lot of what, the, a lot of a part of the training that Frank Gatson was putting them under. And the choreography, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, you know, one, two choreography. Like it was actual choreography. And that's what we've been waiting for in this girl group that we wanted to see, you know, take over the pop industry. And as a side note, June's Diary is actually the R&B girl group that we have been waiting for for a long time. Because if you will go back about 10 years, R&B and hip hop had a lot more of uh, prominence in radio land and on the top 40. Now it's kind of slipped out. It's still there, but it's not as prevalent as it was uh, back in that time. And I really think that June's Diary being the girl group of the decade, I think that the will bring R&B, urban inspired pop and hip hop back to the forefront and I think we're gonna see a little bit of a change in radio again and I'm really excited for it. Number two, they were a collective group, however you could see each girl having their own individual moments. Not just that they were singing um, together on this great um, showcase, but they weren't just singing together, they were singing solo, but even when they weren't singing solo, you got little moments where you could see the personality of each girl come out. It's a really good quality to be able to be a part of a group and none of you are trying to take the individual shine or the shine for yourself, but you're actually giving shine and celebrating the people that you're working with. Like, when do you see that in the pop industry right now? Number three, Gabby. <laughs> you knew that Gabby was my favorite from my other video, but Yes, absolutely. And it's not even just that Gabby's my favorite because it's just more that Gabby, I kind of identify with Gabby's personality. She has just grown leaps and bounds. Like she's owning the choreography, putting her own um, pizzazz in it. Like she's, like her stage presence has improved like drastically. You know, Gabby and Ashley as well, um, they both admitted, you know, we're not really the dancers of the group. I looked and I saw, I didn't see any type of weakness in Gabby or Ashley. They came up and then I actually leads me into my fourth point. There were no weak spots in the girls. Like, I think the reason why Frank Gatson took a lot of the time that he did is because he didn't want there to appear to be a girl that was, um, you know, behind in the in the dance moves. Like, I think that he wanted to take some focused time before their unveiling and revealing to really cultivate the girls. And I think that, that was seen in the way that um, just across the board, you weren't seeing weakness in their stage presence. Like, all of them with their individuality with all the other things that they have to them individually it really was able to shine forth without it being like ah, oh my gosh I don't know if she's doing the step right you really were able to celebrate the all of them because they were doing so well number five one of the big things that we know about June's diary is that they can sing their faces off and not just that but they do a lot of acapella stuff and I saw that during the showcase they still were doing a lot of acapella not even just acapella but they were taking some time to you know harmonize together even at the, the end of the cover of that's what I like when Cheyenne was um, you know um, singing her part uh, she finished singing her part and then they all came together and just sang their own little hook or their own little uh, vamp or, or whatever it is and added an extra section to the song and I think that's one of the things that will work in June Zairi's favor is the fact that they are so like they can think on their feet because they harmonize together on, on the regular, so they can come up with a new section for a song and totally um, make their performance different than any other person that's out there. Number six, Crystal is a lot of an enigma 
for me because I well first she's had a lot of she's had a lot of uh, girl group experience having been in what's the name of the group 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 crystal mm, it's on the tip of my tongue rich girl that was the name okay we can move on now. Crystal has had a lot of girl group experience. And so you could tell like even with like her stage presence and especially with her voice, her voice is very big. She's even the tallest one of the group. People were really making her the Beyonce of the group. And you could really tell in, in Crystal's character from the way that she's been performing and the way that the, the group has been handling her, she didn't want that, um, okay, I'm just the leader of the group. She really wanted to have a, a sisterhood and she wanted everyone to be, have equal shine. There was a lot of character that Crystal has shown behind the scenes that was even seen um, in front and I really respect that. Number seven, I just wanted to take some time to talk about good time. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that they actually took a lot of Gabby's style because Gabby has a very different um, inspiration library than the rest of the girls. She likes a whole bunch of artists that um, people who are well versed in R&B and hip hop and those, those are the main genres that they listen to wouldn't necessarily hear about. And I think that that style is, I think welcoming that style along with um, incorporating the, mm, I guess the trap styles and like the trap influences, it was really an eclectic song. Not to mention <laughs> the choreography break at the end of the song, man, they really killed it. And I think that that song will work well um, as a single. I don't know if they're going to choose it as a single, but I think that song would also work well. And I think that it was a great song. <laughs> Number eight, and something else we were waiting for because we saw a little bit of a preview. I know why you're calling. Now, if there is any song that should be a single, and I'm not saying probably like a first single, probably like a second or third single, from top to bottom, it just really absorbed the strengths of each of the girls in a very basement R&B, like it almost reminded me of uh, a Leah type beat. We saw the R&B in them, we heard the R&B in them, and I think I Know Why You're Calling really embodied the sound that we were waiting to hear from them. Number nine, we're almost there. Even though we saw an amazing improvement in stage presence and performance, there is still so much room for growth and maturity. And not even that they're, they're not um, grown and mature, but just I can see them growing even more and more getting uh, used to performing with one another. Having more of a budget for bigger shows and bigger performances. It really feels like the old Kelly, Beyonce and Michelle, and, but in a very much their own way. They're not trying to be Destiny's Child. And I think that we're going to see another girl group that we really, really were waiting to see. And number 10, my last point, I think that the unity that they are showcasing, it really speaks to me. Like I look at it and I see like one girl is serving the other girl, stepping back so somebody can step in front. They're not really trying to, to be ahead of one another. They're not trying to be like, oh, I'm the best or is there anything like that. There's a very genuine bond that's between them and I think that is what's going to keep them. It's going to keep them when they're down the line and you know whether it's performing in Vegas or performing in different places it really shows that they are going to be able to stand the test of time and I think that it's really good. I'm excited. I'm really excited. The reason why I wanted to just sit down and talk to you guys about June's Diary is because I'm really fanning it out. <laughs> really spazzing out and um, I just kind of wanted to get it all in one place um, I also wanted to have a space for us to talk I know that a lot of you June bugs are really really um, just proud of them and you're really really celebrating and you're, you're just excited like I am so I wanted to give a space even in the comments for all of us to, you know kind of like you know get all the celebration energy <laughs> I encourage you to like this video give it a thumbs up and I encourage you to subscribe subscribe to this channel because this is the place where we think deeply so that we create art that changes the world. I'm O'Neill Gerald and I'll see you guys later. Okay, bye everyone.